So in a prior video, you watched us rip Dumpy's stake sides off. This is Dumpy, by the way. Uh, this is uh, one of our tools here at Contentment. She, he is a 1967 Ford F600 grain truck that we uh, unceremoniously ripped the uh, stake sides off of a while back. They were rotten and needed to come off anyway. But uh, also because we had plans to turn Dumpy at least temporarily into a logging truck. <laughs> And I've got some E7018 rod and some E6011 rod, just in case I'm no good at the 7018 rod, which is probably going to happen. <laughs> um, and so what I thought I'd do is take, I've marked uh, four feet in from either end. You can see the mark there. I'm going to take some of these uh, sections of uh, two and two and two and seven eighths uh, outer diameter pipe, I think it is. Weld it to the sides here. And then I can stick a smaller piece of pipe inside of it and have a nice little stake there that'll hold the logs. Um, so that's the idea. Okay, guys, so I got some old bolts laying around. And this is obviously the bottom of the pocket will sit on here like that. But I, you know, when I stick the other pipe in, it'll just fall right through if I don't put something on the bottom to keep it from happening. So I found these old bolts. I think what I'll do is just cut the head off of this one, insert it right in there and tack weld it in. That will provide a, an anchor, you know, for the pole to stop at. And then it may also give me, it'd be small area, but it might give me a little place I can hook a hook on or a clevis pin or something like that in case I need to. So. Also got some angle iron here that I'm gonna use as some bracing because otherwise there would just be one bead of weld, maybe two uh, there. It doesn't provide a lot of strength. So if I, you know, cut this and then put it up alongside that, weld that to the, rail and weld this as well it'll give me some added strength okay, so all right first one up ready to weld tag it there Dang it at the bottom. Finish the weld as best I can. Just to prove to you, I got my Lincoln Tombstone welder, 50 amp plug, plugged into the 50 amp plug on the solar generator. This is a solar generator. Those are solar panels. You can see we are doing solar powered welding. We got these uh, brackets welded on, and please. I know, I suck at welding, <laughs> and my welds are ugly, but uh, there it is. I found some extra angle iron that I could weld onto the other side to make the bracket a little stronger. So, just to give you an idea, this is how it works, you know, it holds a, of course, this is not the post that's going in it. Uh, this is just one that was light enough for me to handle, so it's, and it's too small, too. The ones I have fit almost exactly in here, so, yeah, so... Uh, this is the other side. Got the other brackets yesterday, got these today. And I was going to weld 
this receiver on here, uh, right here, so that this mounting plate for a winch uh, could just mount right in it. And then I would pull, using the winch, I would pull logs up from the other side onto the truck. Well, it seems to fit, I mean, it's not perfect, but it seems to fit this uh, stake pocket well enough. And I think the metal's strong enough for the weight of these logs I'm gonna be pulling up that I don't need to do any more than that. That'll save me having to cut another piece off later. But uh, there we go. So next thing to do is cut the uh, pieces of the smaller diameter pipe that I need to fit in here for those. And then probably also <clears throat> weld, weld some little ears onto the end of the pipe. That way when I pull them down, I could hook them on here or on a stake pocket, uh, you know, something like that. And I can angle them down to the ground and then that way I can use them as a ramp. They could double as a ramp to, to pull uh, logs up, you know, when I winch them up. We're here at the location and um, it's archery season here. Archery season started September 1st and there's somebody up in here hunting. He's not going to be too happy when we fire off chainsaws and start making a lot of racket. Anyway. Each chip is unlocking the gate. Just don't spin out. <laughs> <clears throat> Is it in gear? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you got it. Let that let that clutch out and hit the gas. <laughs> Keep going. Don't kill it. We are at 10,372 feet, and as you can see, we're in the forest uh, out here among a bunch of beetle kill. And so today will be just a bunch of clearing because there's a bunch of deadfall on the ground. We have to make way so that when we cut our timber, we have a way to skid it out of here. So we've got to get rid of this deadfall. I don't know if you can see behind us, there's a large tree that came down some time ago. It's I don't no, think you can see it. Can't see it. Um, but uh, it's good only for firewood. So we're going to cut it up into eight foot lengths, which is big enough to fit here on Rusty. And then we're going to drag it out of there. And hopefully those sections will be light enough we can just lift them up on there. But if not, we'll stage them over to the side and come get them later. So that's our job today is to clear as much of this forest floor. We have seven tenths of an acre here we've been granted. Uh, at least 85 trees of seven inches in diameter or larger all beetle kill uh, either Engelmann spruce or subalpine fir. Orange flags denote our boundary for cutting and uh, the marks over there on the trees, I don't know if you can see it, I'll get you one here. The marks 
uh, denote trees that we can cut. So he said we got, actually those are the trees he's charging us for. We can take smaller trees if they're dead, uh, if we want them. Uh, usually they, they recommend you leave some here for habitat, but as you can see, this entire forest is full of beetle kill. There's no lack of habitat. And so he said, you know, if you want to take it, take it. We can't take the live trees, of course. But uh, and as you can see, this area has been logged before. You can see all the, you know, cutting debris and stuff. But um, I guess they want us to finish up this area <laughs> or something. Okay, so on this stump that we cut, this uh, uh, tree that we took out here and loaded onto Rusty, um, when we cut the when we cut it, the stump stood up a little bit. So I'm gonna chop that down a little bit so it doesn't stick up so high. The Forestry Service wants you to leave no more than six inches sitting above the ground, and that would be on the uphill side. This is the uphill side. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it that low, but I'll I'll take a grab at it. And then we need to get this out of here. What do you want me to do with this stuff here? Uh, I would say leave it in place. We can just skid right over it, I think. Okay. I think so. I think so. So, yes, yeah, so we got to get at least part of this one out. And then just clear some of that other deadfall. Get as much of this deadfall cleared out as we can so we can start felling these trees here. And... Uh, so you can see, beetle kill Engelman spruce. I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but there are some sort of dark patches here in the wood, like right there, right there, right there. That's that fungus that's uh, brought in by the uh, boring beetles that creates what they call blue stained pine or blue pine, although technically it's, it's spruce. Um, but, uh, yeah, so when you cut this, it turns out really pretty blue, uh, you know, sort of ambrosia through it. And then you'll see also, because these trees have been sitting so long, they're checked all the way to the center, almost every log. That makes it hard to mill, but, uh, this is going to be our firewood. I'm not really worried about this stuff, but. It's going it, to, when we get to the other stuff that's standing, it's going to make it difficult to mill. So I have to mill around that kind of stuff. But we have some slightly bigger trees we can work with on that to help us. I don't know what he's doing. Putting up a tree saver. So I, I made this little choker that wraps around the tree out of just some chain. I think it's got a, a rating of about a thousand pounds or something. This log is nowhere near that, but it's going to run up against some forces dragging along the ground and stuff. So, And then I think this rope is rated for 700 pounds or something like that. I just did an ugly, I tried to do a bowling, but <laughs> I'm sure it's not a bowling and it's ugly, but I think it'll hold and it should be able to undo pretty easily. So next thing to do, we roll this up. We put the uh, tree saver in that distant uh, fur over there. I'm going to run the line up around that. We'll pull Rusty up the hill, and we'll use the snatch block that I'm going to install there to help pull the tree, <coughs> hopefully, up, keep it off the ground a little bit, skirt it past that stump and over all this stuff, and get it up the hill a little bit so we can work with it more easily. <coughs> Okay. 
Stop! Hold on, stop. Yes? Okay. It did move, though. Yes. Okay. Good. Let me get this stick. I'll pry it up. Yeah. Now maybe it'll go. I guess keep going. Stop! Okay, keep going. Keep going. Go. And stop. Back up. Okay, so we got all the deadfall. It doesn't look like it, but I mean, we got the important stuff. Uh, out that was right here in front and then down the slope there a little bit behind that has opened up uh, a way for us to fell 18 of our trees uh with just a few hours work how long were we here about five hours i don't know what time is it 12 o'clock <laughs> it's like five o'clock now i think we five were here at like 11. okay so six hours worth of work we weren't very fast though and this is what we yeah we weren't very fast it's kind of new to us and this is what we got off of it. That's what we pulled off of the floor, the forest floor. And uh, as you can see, we got a tile of our stuff on top. Boy, we look like a couple of Okies, don't we? Uh, all, we all we're missing is a mattress and uh, and the name, uh, what's the name, Judd? Jode. Yeah, Jode. I, yeah. I need to sit on the back. <laughs> you could be Granny. I am Ma Jode, I already say that all From the, the Beverly Hillbilly, you can be oh, Granny. granny. Uh, I so, don't know. I don't know who's a better grandma, Ma Jode or Granny <laughs> So, anyway, uh, we've cleared out space to be able to down some trees. And uh, so, I don't know. How to, I, I mean, we really need to go through the forest floor here. We, we probably ought to do that. Just finish cleaning up all the down, the deadfall and the windfall. Um, going back that way for the rest of the property so that we can have this clear and we can start cutting trees. Um, I'm, technically we can cut these trees, but they would just wind up sitting here for a while until Dumpy got here. So, I don't know. But uh, anyway, it was a fun day. I enjoyed it. Did you? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the matter? There's a fly or a bee. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's getting late and uh, sun's getting ready to go down. But, uh, man, we had a blast up here today. It was fun. And uh, was we'll do some more tomorrow. We'll sleep tonight, won't we? We had to lift these things into here. So, uh, we have a winch and a way to do it. But I don't have the winch set up to work with Rusty. So, these are dry, so they're fairly light. I mean, the most, I think, one of these bigger ones weighs is probably 100 pounds. So we're able to just sort of tip them up in there and slide them in. But I'll tell you, the biggest thing getting me today was lack of oxygen at this altitude. How about you? I didn't work as hard because I didn't lift as much. <laughs> doesn't, that doesn't bother me as much as it does you, I don't think, anyway. Must be nice. Anyway, all right, let's go down the mountain. Well, 
Folks, the wind is so bad that I may wind up having to narrate over this, but, um, and we've lost some video. Uh, we had video of uh, collecting and, and getting logs up on Dumpy uh, up in the mountains, but uh, it's been lost. I don't know how. But I thought I'd show you, since I have a load of logs here on Dumpy, uh, sort of the finished product. Uh, you can see the stake, the pockets, and the pipe that we got. We have some longer pipe that, you know, uh, sits off here that we could ramp these up with. And uh, so here's Dumpy with about a, I don't know, less than a half load of logs. Um, and this is where I wound up installing a receiver for the winch and i just uh and then i got a winch you know plate that plugs into a receiver stood it up sort of like this and then would winch things over uh from that side up onto the truck and you can see the chain that i used but uh yeah there it is it worked pretty well uh but you know the longer we keep dumpy uh the, the less I like it and we bought Dumpy because you know we wanted to truck with a long bed that we could haul materials on but uh, you know Dumpy has turned out to be uh, more work and expense and I think he's he's gonna give us back in uh, in production um, probably should have invested in a 16 foot uh, trailer, you know, low trailer or something like that that could be pulled by Rusty. But uh, we didn't. We thought this would be the ticket. But I mean, this thing gets terrible gas mileage. It goes, you know, top speed on this 60 with the engine just screaming normal speed, cruising speed, you know, to save enough gas about 40 miles an hour. It cost a hundred and nine dollars, I think, in gas to go up to the mountain and back. Uh, just to get a load of logs and uh, you know it's just mm, I don't know I think Dumpy's days are numbered here I think it was a um, I guess it was a it wasn't a great purchase for us but I think we'll be selling Dumpy and probably getting a trailer here pretty quick that we can tow that's more convenient uses less gas and we'll carry about the same amount of weight but we'll see <laughs>